Hello YouTube. This is the Triumph Bonneville Bobber. I'm going to call it Bobby for the purposes of this video. Why not? It's, I know, cliche, obvious thing to do and all that. So first of all, let's start up with the uh, with the display. It is uh, this one, which I believe is also the same clock assembly that you get on the new Scrambler as well, which uh, that is going to be on my list of things to test ride very soon. Anyway, this is what we get uh, if I turn it on. I'm not so sure the key is in the best place for me personally, uh, but I know they've tried to keep this as sort of authentic as they can, as it were. So the key is actually down under the seat. I'll show you in a minute. So that's the display. It's, uh, yeah, you've got the, f the fuel gauge on the left there, gear indicator just above that, and uh, the indication of what uh, road mode it's in. It's coming in normal road mode. I think there's road and rain on this one. Uh, it's a digital rev counter, which is a bit different. I don't think I've ridden anything with a digital rev counter before. Uh, traction control is on, and I believe if I hold the information button in, I can turn the traction control off. So if you want to do really mad wheel spinny, donutty type things, then that's uh, the mode that you use there. Uh, odometer, as normal, of course. Uh, two trip computers, uh, real time miles per gallon, and then an average miles per gallon. Uh, fuel range, 56 miles until uh, the tank is empty. No running out of fuel jokes on a Triumph demonstrator, please. And finally, the clock. Uh, so the controls then, nice silver levers, normal sort of stuff. Very light clutch, as a lot of the new Bonnevilles do have. Uh, information button there for changing their modes, I've just shown you. Uh, the same indicator switch like you get on the uh, T100. It's uh, that quite sharp, pointy thing. Uh, and I do find that when you're using the indicators, uh, to, for it to actually cancel, you've got to get the button you've got to be pretty much bang on central with it um so with a glove on it's quite easy to sort of not quite hit the right spot um so sometimes yeah the, it is hard to get the indicators to cancel um but uh, again that's something that we'll probably get used to after uh, continued use uh horn <coughs> sounds good then up over on this side we've got the new uh, all-in-one kill switch and ignition switch um selection uh, hazard lights down here, which yeah, you slide them to put them on. Then there's the mode button that's just for switching between road and rain mode. So uh, it's in road at the minute. Press it once, flashes over, and it's in rain mode. And I'll give it a try on the fly as well, but I'm pretty sure as you're going along, it's the same as the T120, etc. Uh, you're going along, you pull the clutch in, you press the mode button, and then it switches over, and then clutch out and carry on. So yeah, you can do it on the fly. Up front then we have uh, LED indicators, uh, as demonstrated like so. Uh, the standard uh, front headlight bulb on this one, uh, you still get the, the tri triangle logo in the middle there. Single front brake disc, we'll go over the brakes uh, whilst we're out on the road. Uh, hideous reflectors, there's some kind of EU thing which has to be on there. Don't worry, they really are easy to peel off, so I've been told you can just pop them off quite easily and they don't really leave any sticky residue. Uh, you just need a little bit of a clean up just to uh, finish that off. Behind the forks we've got the radiator tucked in there. This is the uh, Bonneville 1200 high torque engine, same as the T120, liquid cooled, hence the radiator. And then we've got the twin exhaust double skinned pipes. And it's all the usual stuff, all the Triumph branding on the, the spark plug caps and all that lot. The brushed aluminium engine casing. Uh, these will corrode. Uh, I will warn you now. I know if I have it on good authority that these do corrode if you do not uh, give them a regular clean and treatment. ACF 50, etc. Uh, yeah, check out Captain Rambuck just for that one. He, uh, he had that issue on his Thruxton, but he's now had his powder coated black and they look superb. And here's where the key is. On my scrambler which is the old one, uh, it's on the side of the forks, which I have done before, and I'll probably do it again. I have left my keys in the ignition. I think I'm even more likely to with a key position like this, but I know that's the sort of authentic place to have it on this sort of bike. And then under the seat here, now this is, uh, I, haven't, I haven't got the tool to be able to uh, try this all out, but this seat is fully adjustable, so you can slide it back and pitch it up and down as well uh, on this uh, with uh, adjustment from that, I guess it is, and... Combination, combination of these two uh, Torx bolts there uh, to adjust all that. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't got the tool with me to do that, so I can't really try out different seating positions. Uh, but if you get one, then yeah, by all means, have a go. 
because uh, the seating position is a bit strange and it certainly looks strange but uh, it doesn't feel as weird as it looks under the seat there you've got the mono shock there hidden away so it's kind of still looks like a like a sort of hard tail sort of thing now i will agree with most people about the back end it seems a little bit i don't know it just sort of doesn't it doesn't look right somehow um <laughs> it's as if they've just, yeah, just sort of run out of ideas for the design and just sort of stuck with the rear fender and left it at that so there we go that's what we're looking at so uh, we'll see how it is on the road what we must do first of course though is uh, do the old uh, sound test uh, I believe to start it we pull the clutch in and as you can hear it's got a very nice little rumble to it it does rumble along Okay, let's uh, let's do the ride. Now then, this is probably a YouTube first. If you can see both my feet, they are flat on the ground. That's the first bike I can flat foot. <laughs> uh, that isn't like a little 125 or whatever, or a Grom. So yeah, I can actually flat foot this bike. I'm, I can lean back with both feet on the ground <laughs> and be completely stable and everything that is nice but anyway that that was just for me that was <laughs> but yeah if you are a short rider uh, the bobber's not going to be a problem trust me yeah if you were tall um well because you got that seat adjustment you should be able to uh, adjust accordingly so yeah if you are like, quite a tall person you could slide the seat right back and i think you'd still be comfortable i wouldn't know i'm not tall I only know how it is to be a short person. Uh, by the way, I am five foot three approximately. I do get asked quite a lot in my uh, test ride videos because I always mention about the uh, seat height and stuff like that. Uh, and I, I forget to mention how tall I actually am. For comparison, where should we take Bobby? Well, there's a helicopter coming in to land over there. There's a helicopter taking off over there. Let's go for a ride by the side of the field. The mirrors are in a decent position. There's only a little bit of my arm in the way. Obviously you can adjust them accordingly, but uh, I've got a good view behind me through them. Speed bob. Bob, speed bob. So this has the uh, same engine as the T120 and the Thruxton. It's tuned a bit differently to give more low down power and torque. So as we pull out onto the dual carriageway in a minute, we'll see how well it gets up to speed. Here we go. Yeah, pretty quick. Doesn't help when there's a big line of traffic in front of you. Uh, red line's at about six and a half thousand revs. Um, but yeah, very quick low down. And uh, now, from what I remember from the launch night that I went to, this looks a lot bigger than it actually is. It's not too wide either, so filtering like so is pretty good. And because it's low down, you've got a load of confidence. You know, if you're filtering, you suddenly lose a bit of stability and you need to put your foot down. Obviously, as a short person, that's a bit of an issue. But on this, it's uh, very easy to reach the floor just to give yourself that bit of stability through the tight spots when you need it. It's the Rosers. Don't worry, Bobby, we've not done anything wrong yet. Of course, with uh, having the, that light clutch and the ride-by-wire throttle, it is very easy. You don't get a cramp in your fingers, in your palm, from uh, pulling the clutch in and that. It's a very comfortable ride. Now, it's not the most practical bike. It's, um, well, for a start, it's only got one seat, so uh, no pillion. There are luggage options available. You get them low slung um, little side panniers. And it's only a, what is it? I think it's a 12 litre fuel tank. I'll put the correct answer up on the screen. Um, I know it's, it is a small fuel tank, so uh, you don't get a great deal of range from it. The bars on the fuel gauge, it's uh, showing two bars of fuel used from a full tank. And the range we have left is just 51 miles. So yeah, range out of a tank, you're probably looking at what, 130 miles thereabouts? Depending, of course, on how you ride it. Oof! 
<laughs> oh, I just hit that pothole smack on and that that jolted and that, that actually hurt a bit. <laughs> So I mentioned earlier about the seating position, how it looks strange when you've seen photos of people riding this. Um, it doesn't feel as bad as it looks, because it looks like they're all sort of hunched up and cramped, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, I keep catching a glimpse of my shadow and it does look a little bit strange, um, but I'm quite comfortable. It's, um, it's, it's a good position. The controls on this aren't like, f aren't forward controls like a cruiser. They're uh, in the sort of, well, they're, they're a little bit more forward than normal. I think they're um, they're around about the same position as uh, what the T120 is. Right, I'm just going to try the turning circle out. This is a small country lane, as you can see. I am going to paddle it around, but I am putting the steering on full lock just to demonstrate its uh, turning circle. And, yeah, that ain't bad for uh, something I'd expect it to have quite a wide turning circle. I was expecting something more... More like an ocean liner, uh, but no, that's done it nice and tight. Almost as good as what my scrambler can do, actually. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's not so comfortable on these back lanes that are all bumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not suited for that, obviously. Why would you do it? Why not, eh? It's a fun bike. But yes, it is certainly more for the road and for going fast. Let's hear a little more of that bobby sound. That's a good growl. Nice one, Bobby. Yeah, for stock pipes, that sounds pretty awesome. And listen to that. It's good. It's a good sound. This. This will bring out your inner hooligan, no problem. <laughs> Let's do a quick brake test, so, woo, mm, not bad. Single front brake disc, I think it may need just a little bit more um, on it, but it's no real concern, it's just not quite as, um, as good as I expected it to be. And the back brake is um, pretty useless, to be honest. <laughs> Now it's got ABS, that stays on, you can't switch that off, it's just the traction control that is switchable. But yeah, the handling on this, superb. I've not had any, uh, any worries from it. So, Bobby then. Practical? Not at all, not one bit. Fun? Absolutely. It is a big bag of fun. Although it's, uh, well I think the stats say it's quite weighty, but it doesn't feel like it at all. It's all low down and stuff, uh, yeah, low centre of gravity and all that lot. So it feels really light, makes the handling nice and easy. It does feel good to ride, and uh, yeah, it's not difficult to ride at all. So yeah, it is certainly a lot of fun. Now the price tag, just upwards of £10,000, is it worth it? I'll be as honest as I can be. Now I've not tried the similar sort of bikes to this from the likes of Harley Davidson, etc. So I don't really know how they compare. Uh, but if you want a impractical fun bike there are plenty of other things on the market for less than £10,000 that will satisfy your needs for that from what I've experienced today uh, great fun out on the country roads and stuff not so much fun in them small back lanes <laughs> but yeah even uh, in roundabout town and stuff it does really well when I uh, say filtering no problem it's nimble enough for that it's low enough Low enough to the ground for the short people. And for the first time, I can paddle it backwards without having to get off. <laughs> right, where's the wall? The wall's right there. Don't go back any further. <laughs> there we go. Great fun. So thank you, Destination Triumph. Thank you, for you, thank you to you for watching. Ride safe and I'll see you next time.